Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. of the world says the Lord whoever follows me will have the light of life Alleluia. 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 the Lord be with you and with reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew Glory, Glory to you Lord Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for me. These words in today's gospel were spoken to the exact same crowd that last week heard the Beatitudes. And it's this fact, I think, that makes them all the more powerful and provocative. Jesus makes the use today uh, of two metaphors. The first is he says, you are the salt of the earth. Now that might not mean a whole lot to us in a day when we have refrigeration. But in a climate like Palestine, in Jesus' day, salt was as precious as a man's life. It didn't simply make food more palatable, but it stayed off putrefaction. It prevented decay and corruption. And so Jesus is saying that those who live the Beatitudes, those who manifest them within the world, are those who prevent the world from falling into corruption. They allow it to continue. And it only takes a pinch of salt to do so. It does not take great numbers. It could be one person within a community, one parish within a city, fully living the gospel, reflecting the Beatitudes that can prevent it from falling into corruption. The salt in that day was also used in ovens, and it was laid down as a base, and it would help to radiate the heat. But after about a year or so, it would begin to break down, so it would have to be replaced. But at that point, Jesus warns, its value ceases to exist. It no longer can season things. It no longer makes food palatable nor can it stay off putrefaction. It has to be thrown out literally into the roads to be trampled underfoot. That's exactly what they did with the salt in his day. And so if we fail to live the Beatitudes, if we are Christian only in mind, in thought, then we lose our worth and our capacity to have an effect upon the world around us. He also says, you are the light of the world. And again, with electricity, this might fall a little flat for us where we can have light 24 hours a day. But in Jesus' day, it was quite different. Each house would typically have a little round window. But once the sun went down in the evening, it was pitch black. Typically, they would have uh, a little lamp that was used for light. It sort of looked like a gravy boat, I guess is the best way to describe it. And it would have a wick laying across the top of it. And that was the sole source of light from sundown to sunup. And so Jesus is saying, 
This is what you are to be to the world. A single candle, a single lamp can illuminate an entire home, an entire room. A single Christian whose actions, whose deeds are reflective of the Beatitudes can illuminate the world that has fallen into darkness, corruption, greed, cruelty. This is what we are called to be. If that light is hidden under a bushel, then it ceases to be able to fulfill its role. It has to be placed on a stand. We can't be ashamed of our Christianity. And that, in fact, we have to live it boldly in word and deed. Let's pray today that God once again would, would strengthen our faith, that he would allow us and our lives to burn hotly in a world that has grown cold in his love for God, that through our words and our deeds, we would prevent it from falling into corruption. A bishop once told his priest, that they should not be so worried about getting burned out that they never catch fire. I think that's true for all of us as Christian men and women. We don't want to exert ourselves. We don't want to put ourselves out there in our faith so as to become burned out, either through exhaustion or through the rejection of others. We have to live the faith deeply enough. We have to let the the fire of God's love and his spirit burn hotly within us if we are going to illuminate the world, if we are going to purify. Let's pray today that God would give us the grace through the sacrament that we receive to make it so.